Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Welcome to AP Biology Lab 3. This one is on mitosis and meiosis. In this mitosis portion, what we're going to do is we're going to look at cells in a root, in this case onion root, and see them actively dividing and figure out how much time they spend in each of the different phases of mitosis. And then meiosis, we're going to be looking at ascospores produced by a specific type of fungus called sordaria. And we're going to figure out percent of uh, crossover. And thereby, we can figure out how far the genes are found apart on the chromosome. And so first let's talk about what mitosis and meiosis are. Mitosis is basically division of the nucleus, but it's equal division of the nucleus. And so let's say we have a typical diploid cell. In us, we'd have 46 chromosomes in here, but in this one, they only have uh, 2n equals 4. So basically, in mitosis, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the DNA. They're going to line up in the middle during metaphase. They'll pull apart during anaphase. And then we essentially have two cells at the end that are both diploid, and they're both identical to this first cell. And so mitosis is the way during the cell cycle that we produce identical identical cells. That's how you went from one cell to the billions and trillions of cells that are inside your body right now. What's meiosis then? Meiosis is basically starts the same way. We start with a diploid cell, we copy the DNA, but then instead of just splitting in half once, it splits in half twice. We also have this crossing over that occurs and so essentially instead of getting duplicate cells, we get haploid cells. They have half the amount of genetic information. And then they have chromosomes that have never really existed before. Those chromosomes are a combination of the chromosomes of the parent cell. And so that's meiosis. And so let's start with mitosis. In this lab, you could use either meristems. Those are going to be indeterminate parts of a, of a plant. In other words, you can think of them almost like plant stem cells. They're cells that haven't decided what they're going to become. Or blastulas. Blastula is going to be a ball of cells. We either use whitefish blastula, but I have more luck just using the onion root. So basically, how does a root grow? There's a, a apical root meristem down here, and basically it's going to copy those cells over and over again, and the root is going to get longer and longer and longer as those cells divide. And so basically, what you can do is you can look at the cells, and this is just a diagram. We can look at the cells, what phase they're in, count the number of cells in all the phases that they're in. We can figure out how much time they spend in each of those different phases. Some kids are confused at this. They think that somehow the cells are growing as they watch them. Just think of it this way. Let's say I were to take a snapshot of every kid in my high school. So there's like 1,900 kids in our high school. If I were to take a snapshot of them right now, and count the number of them who are sleeping or texting or taking notes or doing a lab or whatever. Basically, if I counted the percent of those who are doing each of those activities, then I could kind of extrapolate and say that's how much time during the day, class day, they're spending doing each of those activities. So basically what you do in this, use a partner, is you go through and you count the phases. So this one right here would be an interphase, an interphase, an interphase, an interphase, interphase, and prophase, and interphase, and this one right here would be, this one looks like um, almost getting to, I would say, anaphase maybe anaphase here, this would be a prophase here, this would be a metaphase here. So basically what they do is they go through, count hundreds of cells, they figure out how much time they're spending in each of those. We then get the classroom data set as well, figure out the percent of the time they're spending in there, and then we just make an old school uh, pie chart. So in this one, we had about 73.8% of the time is spent in interphase. So we counted thousands of cells, and so 73.8% of the time they were in interphase. That means they're spending about that much time during the course of a day in interphase. Next would be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And so basically, in this lab, you can figure out how much time they're spending in each of those. And so this would be the cell cycle. And you'll see this as you study mitosis and meiosis. This, it almost looks like a washing machine where they're in this phase and then in this phase and then in this phase. We'd put cytokinesis kind of right in here. And so basically this lab, you're able to see how much time they're spending in each of those different phases. And that's just the mitosis portion. The meiosis portion, what we're using is we're using a fungus called sordaria. So basically there are two different phenotypes. There's the dark and then the tan. You let them grow and then you're going to grab spores from this area where those two will come together or where those two are going to interact. Basically most sordaria are going to be this dark color. They're going to make these dark colored spores like this. And then there's a mutant which is going to be the tan. They're going to make the tan spores. But where they grow together you'll get spores that are a combination of the two. So the chromosomes are coming together. If there's no crossover between those two they're going to align themselves in this four to four or four to four pattern. That means no crossover existed. 
But if there's crossing over that exists, then you're going to get a 2 to 2 to 2 to 2, or a 2 to 4 to 2, or 2 to 4 to 2. And so if you see ascospores that look like this, that means crossing over has occurred. So the cool thing about this lab is that basically you can figure out frequency of crossover. You take those spores, put them underneath glass, push on it with your finger, and you're going to kind of pop out all these spores. It's going to look something like this. And so now you can go through and you can count the number of spores that are crossing over and not crossing over. So if we're to look at this one, we're going to say not crossing over, not crossing over, not crossing over. But this one right here would be crossover. So there's going to be crossover in that one. There's going to be crossover in that one. There's going to be crossover in that one. So you can go through the whole thing and figure out the frequency of crossover. I'm not going to count all of these, but let's say that roughly 50% of them have crossover. So 50% crossover. Since when they produce these spores, they'll double them, basically what we have to do is we have to take that number, 50%, we have to divide it by 2, and that's going to tell us the number of map units. And so in this case, we'd have about 25 map units. Um, what does that mean? Well, if a chromosome looks like this, and there's a centimeter right here, basically it means that those two genes are going to be 25 map units apart, something like that. And remember, all the way is going to be 50 map units on the whole of the thing. Uh, and so if that makes no sense, make sure you look at frequency of crossover, especially the work of Thomas Hunt Morgan. Make, maybe it makes a little bit more sense, uh, but I hope that's helpful.